of westbound with detours while the eastbound lanes remain open. Uh, the work in 2016 that we intend to accomplish is the westbound lanes between Hennepin Avenue and uh, 3rd Avenue. Um, that's represented sort of in the green shaded area. Um, we'll then go into a winter suspension in which we'll reopen uh, each direction. Westbound and eastbound will be open between uh, November and uh, April. And then starting <laughs> April of next spring, we will complete the westbound lanes and uh, at that point, we'll, we'll move over to the eastbound side, start work on the eastbound side. We'll have traffic, uh, westbound traffic, back on the newly constructed westbound lanes. And the eastbound uh, construction will be sort of in half, uh, initially between 5th and 2nd Avenue, and then moving further to the west between uh, 2nd Avenue and Hennepin Avenue. Uh, so that's where we're at with the project. Uh, we, we're uh, eager to move forward and uh, appreciate your time here today. If there's any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. I no, appreciate the update. Any questions per the presentation? Councilmember Gordon, followed by Councilmember Bender. Oh, Councilmember Bender, you have the floor. I just can't help but say how excited I am about this project um, and the public engagement piece that you mentioned and um, that the county managed with then uh, Jenny Hager is the engineer, just was such a change and I think resulted in this really excellent project that balances all of the different needs of this really, um, you know, high, uh, um, uh, what's the right word? Corridor that a lot of people use. Mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> you know, Washington Avenue is just a few blocks from the river and uh, right now it's kind of a gulf that's really difficult to cross. Uh, you end up bicycling on Washington Avenue a lot if you're trying to get from downtown to the University of Minnesota or just pass through downtown. And so this, um, what I think is the first curb-separated cycle track that the county will build, uh, one of the first in the city, um, will just make such a huge difference. And it's really exciting. I, I wish we could have taken out one more travel lane to get a little bit less crossing distance for pedestrians, uh, but this project is going to really transform this part of downtown, and I'm really thankful to staff uh, from the county and the city who worked together to bring this forward, and I can't wait to bike in it and walk. Thank you for your comment. Uh, any questions or comments? Councilman Gordon? Well, I think it might be nice if the presentation could be posted online with our agenda, and maybe um, that's the assumption is it will be after the meeting today. Uh, and I also... Um, it's it's great to see the protected bikeway and with the greening there. Um, I looked at it, one of the pictures longingly thinking about what we might not have on third, but we don't have to relive that now because we've got some other plans ahead for some other streets and hopefully this can be a model for us and what we could do there. And, and I was um, curious, there's, there's some bus stops on Washington, is that true? And did I miss, I stepped out just for a minute. Do you have an illustration of how you're going to, how the protected bikeways going to um, uh, be treated in terms of the bus stop? Uh, Mr. Chair, Council Member Gordon, uh, I don't have that with me today. Um, we do have graphics that we've used in the past that kind of show that um, that treatment, uh, how the cycle track goes around the bus station at, at those locations. Is there um, a project website we can go to at the county or people at home who are viewing can go at the county um, website to the details and see that okay the layout that i have here today which obviously is very zoomed out you can zoom in and you can see the, those locations how those treatments work all right thank you uh, any <clears throat> any questions for the presentation um see none i will then this is a public hearing i will open the public hearing uh, did anyone sign in no one signed in anyone wish to come forward anyone wish to come forward uh see none i will close the public hearing and uh move approval of the project. Um, any questions for that motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Senti nay, and uh, again, thank you for the presentation, and as Councilmember Bender echoed, or said, and I will echo, the importance of these improvements are really uh, incredible in how downtown connects the river, but now how an, a, a very established dynamic community connects with a, an emerging one, uh, basically North Loop connecting with uh, the east downtown uh, I think this is going to be the, the workhorse to make those two communities one, and uh, I think we'll be all the better for it in, in, in terms of how it's been designed. So thank you. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. Yeah, just uh, perhaps just a little information for our traveling public right now is you probably are aware that uh, westbound Washington is currently closed, 
and that's uh, work that Excel is doing in preparation for this project. Uh, my understanding is that work will probably continue through the summer and then uh, immediately following the completion of that work, the, the county will be coming in. So uh, westbound Washington will be closed uh, probably you know, through, through the summer and into the fall and uh, open uh, uh, you know, temporarily through the winter time. So yeah, impacts not to be underestimated. Thank you. All right, we will now move to our last item today. Uh, which is a discussion item, um, and that's item 13 on, or 14 on the agenda, and that's the Organics Recycling Ad Campaign and Program Rollout Status. Uh, Mr. Chair, first off, I, I would like to uh, thank you and the committee for allowing us to make this presentation today. Um, as we start rolling out, or we've been rolling out our Organics Recycling Program here, and we're kind of halfway through, we rolled out some uh, last fall, and we're continuing to roll out the, the remaining of the city uh, this, this spring. Um, you know, Minneapolis residents are a lot more familiar with the one sort recycling process than the organic uh, recycling process. And therefore, um, the really the, the, the communications and outreach uh, associated with organics is, is significantly more than what we had with our uh, one sort recycling. So with that effort, uh, we have uh, staff here today to explain to you kind of what, what we're doing as far as kind of what I'll call the ad aspects of uh, organics. And um, I'll start with Angela Brenny and we have uh, both uh, Kelly Kish and I think, uh, yep, uh, uh, our communications uh, <laughs> persons here as well. And we'll uh, both give you the presentation, but also hopefully those that are, are watching in will uh, learn about the program. Hey, Mr. Chair, committee members, my name is Angela Brené. I'm an analyst for Solid Waste and Recycling Division and also the project manager for the Organics Recycling Rollout. And as Steve mentioned, I'm here with Kelly Kish, the city's recycling coordinator, and Bridget Bornstein, the deputy director of communications for this presentation. And the purpose of the presentation is to give you a high-level overview of what we've done for phase one, kind of what we're doing for phase two, but more importantly, give some added detail to an upcoming ad campaign. Um, the program was first announced in January of 2015. The support and direction to move forward was a part of the 2015 budget process. And throughout that process, the program design selected was an opt-in style program with weekly pickup and to have all rate payers cover the cost of the program so that there's no additional cost when you sign up to participate. And before we get too far in, I'd like to share with you the importance of promotional partners. Um, so this program is relatively new, so as you can imagine, extensive efforts were needed to both let our customers know that the program was available, but to also explain what it was and how to participate. Um, promotional partners included Hennepin County Environmental Services, our City Communications Department, um, Neighborhood and Community Relations, Minneapolis 311, and then grassroots through the neighborhood and community groups. Um, it's important to share that we didn't do this alone and that we were relying on the expertise of other areas to help us identify the best way to reach our diverse customer population, um, which messages to use when and how. Um, that increased our chances that the message would be heard, seen, well received, and more importantly, understood. Um, so with that, I'm here to talk about the efforts of the city's communications department and their partnership, the resources they provided to us as your Deputy Director, Bridget Bornstein. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Reich and Council Members. Um, I'm Bridget Bornstein. I'm the Deputy Director of the Communications Department. Um, I'm here today to just highlight some of the work our staff has done in partnership with um, our colleagues here at Solid Waste and Recycling and Public Works to promote organics recycling. Um, everyone on our communications staff has touched this work in some way. Driving the work are uh, Elizabeth Haugen, Casper Hill, and Kim Brown. Um, what you'll hear about today is primarily uh, paid advertising. As you know, it's very rare that there are any dollars in the city to pay for advertising to get the word out. So this is just a fantastic opportunity. To complement the paid work, communications is coordinating with solid waste and recycling to get the message out to the audiences that we can reach without spending any money at no cost. This is through earned media, our city-owned communication tools, and through donated space. Um, I'll first talk about earned media. 
Um, you can see here that we've got a pretty impressive number, $454,878 in earned media. Um, that speaks to the work of our staff um, and our relationships with local media. Um, also, we just noticed there was just such a great interest in organics recycling when we started spreading the word. People, people just wanted to know about it. Um, also, our own communications tools. Um, what I'm talking about here is the videos we produce. Uh, we produced many videos for orga promoting organics recycling and helping folks understand how to do it. We did this in multiple languages. Um, we have our city website, we have our TV channels, on hold messages, social media, that's just, just a few. Um, when we posted on the city's social media platforms, um, we, we achieved a pretty good reach, and this was at no cost. As part of this campaign, for the first time ever, um, because some dollars exist for this campaign, we tried paying for boosting posts in, in social media, um, and you'll hear about that um, a little, little later in the presentation. Um, we also, as you may know, through our cable franchise agreements, um, we do have space on cable channels for one public service announcement a month. We produce that in-house, so it's at no cost. And so, um, so you can see here that we, um, we also got a great value there from um, running it for several months at the beginning of this campaign. There, you can see it. Yeah. Oh. Now you can see it. <laughs> um, you know, the value is, is fantastic for these public service announcements. If we had to pay for it, I mean, that's a, a huge amount of money. Um, and it really gets um, just great viewership. And that, again, video is produced in-house by our staff. Um, and then we have donated space. And what I'm talking about here are the digital billboards. You can see one of them here. Um, this is also a great value. This is donated by Clear Channel Outdoor. Um, and really that, that highlights the work of our communications department. We're going to continue to partner with Public Works on this um, throughout this campaign and continue to, to, um, to complement the work and um, just, just get the word out as best we can to, to various communities. Mr. Chair, committee members, I'd like to give you just a quick review of what we did with Phase 1. Phase 1 is, feels long gone at this point. Um, it started in August of 2015 and finished in September. Um, through phase one, we placed or exchanged about 12,000 carts. This was all done by city staff um, within that timeline. It was done on time, on schedule. Um, customers were very happy to receive their container. The majority of the carts that we placed were new organic recycling customers, um, brand new to the program. We did exchange um, what had been a long-running pilot for organic recycling, exchanged our carts with the city standard, so the citywide program style container. And then also, um, which is interesting, we exchanged quite a few large garbage carts for small ones. And within the phase one, about 20% of the customers are using a small cart. About half of those were new small cart customers after the organic recycling turned on in their program. So it just reiterates that you can divert the waste and you can reduce to a smaller garbage cart and save that extra $3 a month. And before any carts placed, we are sending out welcome kits to the customer. This gets them on the right track for participation, gives them an outline of what the rules are through the quick reference magnet and also in-home setup tip brochure, uh, provides a, just a cover letter that explains when the cart's coming and some basic program information such as weekly collection. Organic recycling is a little different from one sort and the fact that it is collected weekly, so that's an important message. Um, but also a starter pack of certified compostable bags for each customer and then coupons to buy more or other certified compostable items or kitchen pails or other um, non-necessary program materials. The welcome kits are provided to anyone who signs up, whether they're phase one, phase two, or even pilot customers. They receive the kit as well. Now phase two um, just started or feels like it just started at the end of March here. It's a 12 week process. This is the remainder of our customers, so the last phase of the organic recycling rollout. Um, we're just coming up on the halfway point. Um, everything's on time so far. So customers, and this is the same with phase one, customers that have two units or less in their building are getting automatically a small cart, which is a 32 gallon. Those that have more than two automatically get the medium sized cart, which is a 64 gallon. Customers aren't happy with the size, they can call our customer service number to get it exchanged for a better fit. And onto our ad campaign. So this runs concurrent with phase two. So the last portion of phase two in the ad campaign uh, will be overlapping. Um, the funding for the ad campaign came through the state of Minnesota by way of Hennepin County. 
It's in addition to SCORE funding, which is an annual grant the city receives for recycling efforts. The difference with this piece of the dollars is that it was earmarked for organics recycling, and the purpose was for the program to be successful to provide some form of funding to help us do that. We had originally expected about $115,000. Uh, the amount of funding was determined by the amount of participation in a organics recycling program as of last year. When all was said and done, it came in at 315. Significantly more, um, it was awarded in 2015 with direction to spend it in 2016. Had a few choices for how to spend it. Operations was one, education, outreach were others. Um, we did select to use education and outreach, feeling that that had a more lasting benefit and allowed us to really um, share what the program was, how to participate, how to fully participate, um, so that we do have a higher participation rate in the organics recycling program. We've set aside a small portion of this funding to engage summer interns and in going door to door, identifying what the barriers to participation may be. So they're gonna be going into areas that have a lower participation rate and trying to identify why these customers aren't able to or choose not to participate and those can be addressed later. So the ant campaign methods, as you can see here, there's quite a few different outreach methods that we've selected and I got a handful of messaging. So with the variety of outlets and the diverse population of our customers, we've really worked um, closely with NCR and communications to determine what outlets to use, which have the best reach, and we'll get to the customer base that we're trying to be put into contact with. And then the messaging ranges from just simple branding, what is organics recycling, to call to action, so sign up to participate. When the message is short, so when we're, we're talking a quick impression of 30 seconds or less, so like a radio advertisement, we're utilizing Minneapolis 311 as a point of contact. It's easy to remember. People know 311. Um, when it's a longer message, so something maybe in print, like a newspaper utilizing our solid waste and recycling call center. The strategy is, feels simple. Um, it's to reach all of our customers, to reach them often, to keep the messaging simple and understandable, to use the multiple methods which were previously shown, but in addition to that, to make additional information easily to access. So we have pre-translated materials which we'll be mailing out um, coming in June, but then also utilizing 311 for the quick point of contact, we put in touch with the right resource, having an educated call center to help answer questions, and then also keeping our website up to date with the most current organics recycling information. As I previously said, the ad campaign starts in May and will run through July. Um, one piece that did start early is our truck signage. The trucks that we selected were the cart placement vehicles. The reason they were chosen is because they reach every area of the city instead of just a specific section, like some of our other vehicles. So these trucks had brackets installed on both sides so that we can do interchangeable messaging or signs. And at this point, we're using those brackets for organics recycling messaging. That started at the end of March and it will continue through the ad campaign and likely a little bit beyond that. Uh, the messaging, it ranged three different ones actually, and it ranges from, it's the right thing to do, so the give back to nature message, to the um, reduce waste and save money, so getting back to you can switch to the smaller garbage card if you divert this portion of your material into the organics recycling container, and then also the, the basic, it's easy. It's one, two, three of organics recycling. So the truck signage is a lower cost. We're hoping to have a high impact with it. I'm here to talk about our high value ad campaign and the upcoming efforts is Kelly Kish, the city's recycling coordinator. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members for hanging with us for the rest of this presentation. Um, so again, as Angie, thank you Angie, had mentioned, I'll be talking about some of the things that have yet to come um, and some of the, the bigger things that we're gonna be seeing in the community. Uh, one of the, the biggest ones is actually going to be um, advertising with Metro Transit. Um, we're not only using bus shelters, we're also doing advertising on the inside and the outside of the bus, and I'll talk about those in just a second. Um, but with the shelters, um, we will have at least 38 total shelters being used. We do hope that we will get some additional in-kind shelters, but that is um, kind of a yet to be determined as they're ready to be actually placing those out there. Um, in terms of where the shelters are going to be, we selected some by zip code and we selected some strategic shelters. 
And we wanted to make sure that where the shelters were, were places where there was a lower sign up rate, um, were places that there were really heavily used shelters. Um, and then of course we wanted to make sure that we were reaching our customers. So if you look kind of on the little map here, um, you can see there's a couple in downtown. We don't have any customers in downtown. Those shelter locations are at HCMC and at the library where we know a lot of people um, from the rest of the city are coming into. Um, so the messaging that's going to be on the shelters are going to be those family photos um, that also feature a quote from the family that says, we recycle organics because, um, and something very personal from the family. Um, there are cultural photos and we have an example coming up here in just a minute on those. Um, so bus interior and exterior cards. Um, we're doing 220 interior and 36 of the big tail ads um, for a total estimated impressions of just about 6 million. Um, so this is gonna be seen not only by our customers, but others. Um, again, we're, we're working with our call center and with 311 to be able to answer all the questions and field you know, the right information to people who can sign up for our program um, versus those who couldn't to get them over to Hennepin County where they can look into the business grant recycling information. Um, same thing with um, the interior and exterior cards. Uh, when we were selecting the area that the buses come out of, the garages, in which garage gets more um, cards or tails, we were doing that based on where our customers are and the sign-up rates in those areas. Um, the interior car cards, the slide here says that they're the family style photos and that's actually incorrect. These will also be um, very similar to the, our car service trucks that Angie had showed you pictures of just a little bit ago. Um, and then the bus tail is going to be the, it's, uh, it's the right thing to do, um, recycle food scraps with organics recycling is what's going to be on those. And then just so you have an idea, this is actually the garage map for Metro Transit. Um, as you can see in the blue, that is the East Garage, East Metro Garage. We are not using anything going out of that garage because it is 99 plus percent St. Paul and other parts of the Metro. Um, we are focusing more of our, our um, advertisements, our cards and our, our bus tails coming out of the MJ Reuter Garage, the green up in North and then the Haywood garage that hits Northeast, and then both of those two garages have buses that go along Lake Street, that go along Franklin. Um, and then we're also using some um, coming out of both the, hey, I'm sorry, the Nicolette garage and the South garage. So we are still covering the entire city. Moving on to print advertising. Sorry, my slide there. There we go. Moving on to print advertising, these are um, logos here of the, uh, the newspapers that we are using and some that we're still doing final negotiations with. Um, but all of these we are doing full page, I'm sorry, quarter page color ads. And these ads are gonna be those ones again that feature the family photos. And where appropriate, we're having the actual entire ad translated into uh, a different language that fits with that publication. Um, so all of the neighborhood newsletters that are delivered directly to residents' homes are included in this. Again, going back to that easy access. Um, and then the, uh, some of them are also papers that are available to pick up at racks within the neighborhood. Uh, there's one other thing I want to point out in here. There is not a uh, neighborhood newspaper delivered to every door for the U of M area. And for the, that, we are doing advertisement on the Minnesota Daily website to try and reach that group as well. Um, and just like with our other promotions, we are going to be doing um, more advertising um, in areas where there are lower sign-up rates. And I will also note for everything of the campaign, or reiterate, I guess, um, we worked with NCR to identify the best um, methods to reach the different cultural communities to make sure we were hitting them appropriately and using the money wisely. So here are just two um, examples of print advertising. Um, these are not the finals, so for both of these, there is the translated message um, that will be on the ad with them, but we wanted to make sure that you guys had a visual to see um, when we came here to present today. Um, moving on to digital advertising, we are using um, all of the major news websites, the TV news. We're also using the Star Tribune. Um, Again, all of those neighborhood newspapers, we will be using the digital version of their website as well. 
Uh, going back to our partnership with NCR, um, the Huron Online was um, acknowledged as the number one source for the East African community, so we'll be doing significant promotions on that website, in addition to a couple other cultural websites. Um, and then this extended reach advertising, we like to call it shoe advertising, so it's when you go shopping for shoes and you leave that website, go to another website, and those shoes have miraculously followed you to that website. Um, the extended reach is going to do that for us for organics. So if someone has visited Solid Waste and Recycling's web pages but has not signed up for organics, they're going to be seeing these ads. Um, and the important thing with um, all advertising is a frequency of three. It takes people three times to hear or receive a message before they will actually move forward and take the action on it. Um, Another benefit of the digital advertising is we're able to geo-target those, meaning um, the, the computer systems can tell which zip code you're in and then either give you a message or not give you a message based on that. So with the digital, we are targeting only Minneapolis zip codes. Um, we are, however, excluding several of the downtown zip codes because we do not have customers in downtown. And also with how many people are coming in for the workday that may or may not live within the city, um, we don't want our, our ad money to be spent on people who can't actually sign up and participate in the program. And then with the digital, we're expecting over 6 million impressions. And uh, Bridget had mentioned that we've uh, had a bunch of free um, social media done in the past, and we did do some paid. Um, so the first part of this slide here shows the actual outcomes of our two paid advertisements, um, totaling $300, we reached 150,000 people with uh, 68,000 views and 450 shares. Um, so needless to say, for a very low expense, that was a great reach, um, and we've allocated another $500 to be doing that throughout the course of this campaign as well. Um, we are also going to be doing some radio advertisement, uh, both on cultural and on some mainstream stations. And due to the expense of radio advertising, we did have to be kind of selective in who we were going to provide funding to and who we were not. Um, and so we use industry uh, ranking standards to, to identify you know, the most listened to stations and then had to do some selections based on the type of music so that we were making sure we were trying to cover all demographics. Um, for the cultural stations, we are actually having uh, messages translated into many different languages, and I'll read them off real quick. Um, so we'll have uh, messages in Spanish, Hmong, Somali, Tigringa, Aramic, Ormo, and Vietnamese. We'll also have some on-air interviews on some of those stations as well. Um, and then most of these are going to be five-week campaigns. Some of them are going to be shorter or longer based on that ability, again, to get that frequency of three. So when people hear it on, on the radio that they make the next step to go to the website and actually sign up for the program. And so the messaging for the radio is what is organics and how to participate. And I think one of the most exciting things for this campaign is going to be our new direct mail piece. It's going to go out in June. Um, back in April of 2015, we sent out the first, well, you know, you can now sign up for organics recycling. It had a postage paid reply card included in it. Um, that reply card was so successful that we knew that we needed to include that again in this next mailing. And um, because we thought there may have been some language barriers and it being a new program and a new concept of recycling, we're pre-translating the entirety of the brochure into the, the, the major languages spoken in the city. So when it arrives at somebody's home, they can see that their language is included in that open it up, learn about the program, do the quick fill out of that postcard and get it back in the mail and get signed up. Um, so that again will be going out in June and it will be going out to about 70,000 households. So organics recycling at events. Um, on April 9th, we hosted uh, organics recycling training, one in South Minneapolis and one in North Minneapolis. Um, thank you to communications for pro promoting it on Nextdoor. Um, we had a great turnout. Uh, just real quick for the Martin Luther King Park location, we had 137 people RSVP and 185 signed in. And there were definitely over 200 there. At the Falwell Park, we had just about 36 people RSVP and again, 83 signed in. So it was, they were very, very successful events. 
And it's actually where we also launched our recycling block leader program, which I will talk about right after this slide. Um, working again with uh, neighborhood and community relations, access and outreach staff, we are using some of this money to help support uh, the cultural communities by going to events that are already established and helping them incorporate low waste and zero waste practices in those events and promoting organics. Um, so some of the events coming up are listed there. Um, just yesterday, we were over at the American Indian Month kickoff event where we provided bulk compost for people to touch and see and feel, you know, what comes out of organics recycling. We also had all of the food service where it was compostable and we're collecting that on site to show the whole loop of what you put in here comes back as this beautiful finished compost and allowed people to take that home. Um, and then as always, we'll continue to um, attend any neighborhood community event we're asked to, and then of course support our new block leaders. And thus far this year, we've been at about 35 events and we have at least 62 scheduled, and I'm sure it will increase quite a bit in the very near future. So on the recycling block leader program, Real quick, I have a prop. This is a yard sign that we had made for our recycling block leaders. So they can put it out and they are very easily identified as their block leader in their neighborhood. Um, at that one Martin Luther King training and the follow up park training, we had over 80 people sign up that one day. Um, so what we're gonna be doing with the block leaders is we're gonna be using them um, to, they're going to get more detailed information than the general public gets. They have their nice sign. We're gonna ask them to you know, share the word with their neighbors, whether that be getting people's emails, going door to door, talking to them at national night out events. Uh, we want them to help familiarize organics recycling now. And then in the future, you know, we'll use them to promote other things as well. Um, and with that, um, we have lots of resources available. And here are just some of them. And then we had a second yard sign made. And this one is for people who just want to um, promote the organics program. And I don't know if you've seen these popping up yet already. I've seen them quite a few places, um, but they're very nice. Um, but again, uh, we have uh, brochures that are translated. We've got our detailed yes, no list. We've got the little home setup stickers um, and available to any of the block leaders or any organization that really wants to take them and, and move forward with doing additional education. Um, as Angie had mentioned, we're doing outreach through interns. Um, we have three confirmed interns that'll start work on May 31st. Um, and we'll likely be working with uh, some of the council offices to help identify um, some of the best ways to reach out to the various communities. Um, but again, the interns uh, will be used to gather data, answer questions, provide resources, and then we will use what they have uh, found um, in the future to, to create additional educational plans. And very exciting, um, we wanted to get a promotional item for the program, um, and we wanted to make sure that we were closing the loop and making sure that it was something that promoted waste reduction and reuse, but also that um, it was made of recycled material. So we've uh, ordered these lovely Chico bags, and if you have not seen a Chico bag before, the best part about them is the pouch it goes in is sewn into the seam of the bag. So no matter what, you cannot lose that pouch. Um, they're very durable, and the bag is made of 100% post-consumer PET. The cord that is attached to it is 100% recycled PET. The little clip is 100% recycled polyurethane, and the little carabiner that it comes with is 78% recycled plastic. So we've ordered these, and they will be arriving at the end of May. And then just to bring us all back to where we started, um, there was a consultant study done before there was approval for the organics program. And that study anticipated about 42,000 households would participate, or about 40% of our customers. Um, they expected we'd divert about 8,000 tons annually at a rate of about seven and a half pounds per week, per household per week. Um, where we are currently at, we are at 34.7%. And we're really hoping that this campaign, especially with all the um, outreach to the cultural communities that we're doing um, will help get us over that 40% that was found by the consultant study and that we can use what we get um, out of the interns work to even uh, increase that sign up rate even further. Um, one thing we, we want to be very forward about is we do want to again close that loop and make sure that we come up with a way to get finished compost back to residents participating in the program. 
So that's something once the rollout is done that we're gonna really start looking into. And with that, we can take any questions. Any questions for the presentation? Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, and this is fantastic to see all this uh, work going into this, and I'm glad we have such a great campaign in education, and we're probably gonna get over our 40%. Mm -hmm. I was just curious if we've been um, um, weighing what's been coming in, or when we expect to have the numbers about um, how much uh, annual tons or estimated we are, or how much per household, or those kinds of numbers. Mr. Chair, Council Member Gordon, um, yes, we do uh, get weights um, as the trucks are coming in because um, a lot of people, it's again, a brand new concept. Um, the, currently we're uh, right around the five pounds per household mark, but that's not unheard of with people just getting used to the food scraps and then they move into the paper portion. Um, what we were seeing out of uh, the Linden Hills pilot area in particular, um, before we started the citywide program is they were anywhere between 10 to 15 even higher sometimes pounds per household per week. Um, so it's just, it's that slow educational curve that's gonna help um, increase um, the pounds per household coming out. Well, that's important and then to remind us that even if we get people signing in, yes. uh, we have to keep educating and promoting so that they're using it to the maximum. Are we also measuring then the other um, general um, waste that we're picking up in the old carts to see if that's been reduced at all? We do get the weights. Um, I, I have not personally compared them recently. We've been very busy getting all the, the ad campaign stuff finalized, um, but it's definitely something we'll look into and share. Well, and I'm not that impatient. <laughs> so I mean, focus your efforts on this, but it'll be interesting to get those numbers too, because obviously one of the things we're hoping to do is drive down the amount of our waste that's going to the HERC. Absolutely. Any other comments or questions? Uh, well, thanks for this report. Um, you know, obviously you can have a great program that's well-funded and well-equipped, but if you don't have the behaviors to support um, the program, you just don't have a program. And so this this sort of full court press that you're doing on, I don't, I can't think of the one media approach that you haven't sort of introduced to us uh, for the half dozen people that don't hear about this in the next year. I think the council members here can divvy it up and personally talk to those people because I think, I think you'll pretty much get everyone uh, by the time this is done. And so very impressive. And I think we're gonna see the numbers uh, jump, uh, not just because of the full rollout, which is important, but because of this effort. And I think uh, it should be applauded that you left no stone unturned in terms of reaching out to people. So a true model for other departments, I think. So and I do, I do want to point out this was, um, it's a two year funding mandated by the state legislator only. So we really are trying to use it as effectively as possible now to get those outcomes. So. I have no doubt based on what I saw today that you'll be successful. So with that, this is a received and file. Um, and so I think it's been thereby received and filed. And uh, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.